Well, um, congratulations, I'd first thing say, on a season three, because um, we've interviewed you right from season one, season two, and it's brilliant that it's back again. I've only managed to see two of them, so I've got the others lined up, ready to go. Very, very slick. They look as fantastic as they did uh, this, uh, the other two seasons. Um, what's different this time round? How have you moved it on? Uh, I know, I, th I think we just, we all felt a pressure coming back after this much time away to be more ambitious and to make sure we deliver because you know we could have just faded away and we did we you know we got the opportunity to come back and it's not worth coming back if you're not going to come back and be a a bigger better version of what you were so i think on every level uh we've tried to just raise the ambition of the show so it looks like that the fight scenes which is one of the key things particularly for for so our audience um are full-on furious and i mean they they sort of taken it to another level so I think you definitely succeeded in in that regard. Yes. Yeah, I, I actually feel that way. I said to Brett, you know, Brett Brett Chan's our 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 stunt coordinator and our fight yeah. coordinator, and I think he was so heartbroken when we didn't come back that when we did come back, he was sort of like a horse out of the gate. He'd probably been thinking about fights for two years that he wanted to do. <laughs> and, you know, we spent a lot of time just trying to cut down what he designed into. You know something short enough to put in the show we could have had hour-long fights like he was just <laughs> so excited to just bring it back and i, I think the fights are definitely uh, up another level they definitely are and if you wanted to do extras you could just uh, do an extended fight sequence but for folks like myself and our audience because well, you, you should get brett to share with you brett brett does very produced videos of all the um previses of all the fights cool. So he's got a lot of stuff that never makes it onto the show, like tons of martial arts action. Mm -hmm. You guys should just do a feature on Brett. Mm -hmm. I'd love to. That would be a stunning thing, definitely. Yeah. And what, what is Brett's background then? Is it JKD and sort of is that a question for you? I, I believe I believe his large he he has a seventh degree black belt in Shotokan, if I'm not mistaken, which is a uh -huh. uh, you know, but he studied uh Krav Maga, uh, um Gong Fu. Um, he, he seems to speak very knowledgeably about Jeet Kune Do. I don't know what his exact experience with it is. Well, it, it all looks very good, gritty and uh, and, and and powerful, powerful yeah. stuff. This is for Shannon. So, with the limited notes, your 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 father left. Yeah. How do you how do you how how did you develop this sort of this season particularly? Was it just based on taking his philosophy and the powerful sort of messages within that and bringing that through? Um, is that what sort of drove? Um, his his vision well i'll tell you um you know the original treatment and my father's notes they really they really are sort of the the soul of the show they're 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 the they create the tone and the energy and the perspective of the show and then jonathan and <laughs> um uh you know helped to build that out into a much bigger um more complex and beautiful um world but that original treatment you know always talked about the arc of the main character of Assam and I think in this season we're sort of seeing him have to decide whether he wants to be a true warrior or if he's going to just be a gangster and you know that all of the soul of that transformation and and of the struggle of all of our characters in this world are um energetically within the mm -hmm. the treatment of my father's but you know the way in which and the just beautiful array of characters that we have and their complexities and their struggles are all things that Jonathan and and the and Evan and Josh and the other writers have done such a beautiful job of creating because you know, the treatment was created in the 60s and 70s. It was it, it was a time when episodic TV was very different than it is now. And so, um, you know, hats off to to Jonathan. How do you go about writing that? Do you have a writer's room and everyone's pitching yeah, their ideas? Not, it, and... takes, it takes a lot of people. It's not it's not me alone. Um, um, and then this season in particular, uh, Evan and Josh, who were uh, writers and producers on the show for the first two seasons, they really took over as showrunners this season. Um, so we all did a writer's room together. What was nice about the writer's room is we we really had a lot of familiar faces in the room. You know, a lot of people were happy to come back. Uh, this was the first year uh, Hoon Lee, one of our actors, actually uh, became a writer on the show. He was in the writer's room and he wrote one of the episodes. Um, 
And um, yeah, so we all sit in the room together. We sort of go back to the thematic core of what's the show about. Um, and, you know, what's our emotional goal? What's our what's our spiritual goal? What's our political goal? And then we weave the story around that. And that takes a, a few months and then and then a bunch of writing. And uh, yeah, and then it's just figuring out, you know, where the conflicts are, where the fights are, where the love is and, and where we're going to leave our characters at the end of the season. Which is a question that is baking there is, is it's the end of this season. Um, is there in the offing a season four? Is that something that... Uh... We would love to do one. It feels yeah. like a story that is is that could it's very much the unfolding of America, um, yeah. and it feels like it should continue because it's an un, it's an ending story. Yeah, we would love to. Yeah, we certainly feel it should continue. <laughs> <laughs> what, what would it take for that to happen? Is it just a, I presume massive success, obviously, but um, is it I suppose the changing nature of um, uh, sort of the uh, the, the broadcasting and uh, commissioning? I, but I think of... I think no matter how it changes, the answer is always the same. If the viewers come, we'll be asked to do more, and our hope is the viewers will come. They will come. At least our audience will. It's it's um, it's a it's a gift for our our, our audience. Do you do martial arts? And, and so... I did. I did. I'm I'm retired now. I now I write it for other people to do. Um, I did from about the age of eleven to probably thirty. Um, okay. And uh, and then just life. I had to sort of make some choices about, you know, it was it was pretty clear I was never going to be that great. So um, <laughs> I had to pick the stuff. The stuff I it was writing or martial arts. I went with writing. Uh, so, but you have so a this, black belt, right? This, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a degree black belt in kung fu, and and I did. Uh, I actually in college, I actually taught. Uh, I taught to uh, sort of make some extra money. Um, but yeah, then life got in the way. And uh, yeah, my brain still thinks I could do it, but I'm sure that as soon as I did that, I did be a harsh, harsh wake up call. Yeah. <laughs> but do you feel that informs your sense of how to write the story and how you um, write a conflict and how it's resolved and all that sort of thing? The story points I don't think are necessarily informed by uh, by my martial arts training as much as by many decades of martial arts movie watching. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, you know, there, there are certain traditions uh, and tropes of, of martial arts movies that we either celebrate or subvert. And, and years of, you know, having watched, you know, Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, Jean-Claude Van Damme, um, you know, Steven Seagal, everyone in between, uh, Scott Atkins, you know, just, you know, go down the list, Mark Dacosco, who we were lucky enough to to pull on for the show this year you know just that's definitely ingrained in in, everyone in the room is very well versed in that stuff you mentioned politics and that sort of thing is do you think this is a particularly relevant and resonant series um, given what's happening right now in in the world and that whole idea of um, conflict and racial tension is that particularly why it sort of strikes a chord you think with an audience as well as having all the action within it uh, for sure. I mean, I think it's sort of, um, an, uh, uh, in some ways, an, uh, you know, a difficult um, thing to realize that our show is reflecting current times in a lot of ways. Um, you know, we've, this country has always had um, some difficult immigration issues, uh, issues of, you know, racism, xenophobia, that sort of thing. Um, Certainly with the, you know, Asian hate that popped up during the pandemic, um, that is something that was happening back in the 19th century, uh, very uh, prevalently. So it's, um, it's, um, I think our show does inform uh, current times in a lot of ways and creates sort of a, a way of hopefully seeing the world through our characters eyes and and understanding that their struggle to is to live the american dream is you know a struggle that everyone has and i know that a lot of people said to me during the pandemic and during the real rise in asian hate that our show was actually very uh sort of uh, like a balm for their soul and and em- empowering in some ways to see our characters be such strong, complex, um, and confident um, 
ass kicking characters <laughs> that 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 it uh, it really helped them in a lot of ways. Take so moving that on as well is is the the role of women uh, to mm -hmm. all the characters is a huge sea change from back from the sixties and seventies. So sort of is that something you are particularly. Obviously you are. Um, so could you talk a bit about how you're celebrating the role of women? You know, for, for me, whenever we would be in discussion about the characters and the scripts and reading the scripts, I always got my eye on the women characters and wanting to make sure that they're um, strong, complex, you know, um, characters and, and um, not just, you know, uh, uh, damsels in distress or any of that sort of thing. And, and I think that um, all the writers do an amazing job of making sure that the women um, are very strong characters with great story arcs and, and can be surprising in a lot of ways and really stand up for themselves, which is, you know, obviously back in those times would have been really difficult, but also many women are, are doing all the time, you know, whether it's uh, seen or celebrated, and we definitely get to see and celebrate it on our show. Yeah, if the, the show is a bit anachronistic on purpose, and if we could put gangsters in our uh, 1870s gangsters in Armani suits, we can make uh, women more powerful than maybe they were allowed to be back then. You know? <laughs> well, I think you do a fantastic job, and I think it's a great sort of flagpole for, for a change and uh, and a light that's illuminating some dark things that shouldn't be. Um, and that's a good way to do it, which is partly what I think martial arts is all about, is changing people's philosophy, personality, and the way they are in the world. So are you doing anything particular to celebrate um, Enter, the, uh, uh, Enter the Dragon? It's um, 50 years since 1973, um, and also your unfortunate passing of your father. So is it something that you're going to look to tie anything to this, or is it just as a outside of Warrior, is there something you're going to be doing? Um, well, we're definitely going to tie some uh, celebrations and acknowledgements of my father's, you know, we call it the 50th anniversary of his legacy. Oh, and um, and this show is squarely a part of his legacy. And um, I believe our shows air on Thursdays here in the States anyway, and July 20th, which is the actual date of his passing, um, will be an airing of a very special episode. Um, uh, July, July 20th, right. Yeah. July 20th. Confused. Yeah. 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 And, um, and, and yes, there are going to be many other celebrations, both virtual and on social media, you know, on social media and in different ways um, across a lot of our platforms. So. And the show also, the, the show has done something uh, uh, secret and surprising uh, that comes up in an episode right around that, that same date that is a special tribute to to the legacy of Bruce Lee. And is that why it's coming out on the 20th of July? That's a great, uh, we can call it a coincidence or a great <laughs> cosmic uh, convergence, but yes. <laughs> a convergence, I like that. Well, thank you very much. And I hope and look forward to season four and uh, please keep on going.